Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, we'll jump right into the agenda today. So we are really excited to talk to you guys today about some functionality that has been uh, a long time coming, shall we say. We're really excited to sort of start to bring some of these features out into the field. Um, we hope you'll be as excited as we are. Um, and and uh, so today we'll go through um, kind of a description of what these features are. We'll give you guys a brief demonstration of some of them in action. Um, we'll talk about a little bit of uh, like how the functionality works, um, both in terms of the, the business flow for users and the data flow for MyPath, as well as the updates that the Superglue team has made um, in order to uh, make this work for uh, the, the SISs that we currently support. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about where we're going next in terms of the, uh, the next pieces of uh, like SIS integration that we would like to add into this feature set. Um, and then we'll open it up for questions and feedback at the end. Okay, so um, let's kind of start with uh, the, the baseline for essentially how or why we're, we're coming to you and talking to you about this, what it is that we're trying to do by delivering this functionality. Um, and really it comes, it comes down to how do we deliver um, a stronger, uh, a more complete and a more uh, customized onboarding experience for students that are entering the system. Um, we think that MyPath is a very capable tool. It's very powerful. It's very well situated to, um, to help students and to solve uh, a problem that we've seen in the data where uh, students are applying to college um, and then a large number of them, sometimes 70% uh, or more, uh, don't then uh, proceed to enroll in classes at a given college, even after their application has been successfully submitted and accepted by the college and processed and all that kind of thing. 70% of those students don't show up. So my path is very well situated to help us solve for that problem, both in terms of the way that we've architected its, you know, user interface and the user experience. You know, it's very task-based. Um, you know, we kind of hold the student's hand and, and tell them, you know, here's the first thing that the college needs you to do after you apply. Here's the second thing. Um, and in terms of, you know, we like to use the word sticky, but essentially we use our notification system um, to keep students who drop out of the, the workflow coming back to it, re-engaging with whatever the next set of, of tasks are that, you know, we need from them. Um, but, you know, for all that, we think that there is, and has always been really kind of a, a missing link, which is to say that my path is pretty self-contained at this point. It's integrated with OpenCCC and Apply, and that's how it provides the experience that it does. Um, but we don't make that, we don't bridge that final gap where we are able to uh, communicate the things that we know about a student with the SIS um, and, and vice versa, you know, have what the SIS knows about a student inform the experience that the student gets in my path, right? Um, to be totally transparent, these are things that, uh, you know, we have, uh, we've heard colleges asking for since even the very early days uh, back when we were in the education planning initiative. Um, and we didn't feel like we had a good way to solve for it up until probably within the last year um, when we started to work together with the super glue team who are helping us to provide that connection between MyPath and, and the student information system. Um, and so what we did was um, the MyPath team and the Superglue team got together. Um, we rounded up a group of uh, colleges to give us some input in terms of the, the way we wanted to prioritize some of this work. Um, and from there, uh, what we have delivered is um, a, a first version of, of an integration between MyPath and the student information system using uh, Superglue, the adapter, as the bridge between those systems. So if you don't mind, I'm actually going to drop um, the PowerPoint here for a quick second, and then I'm going to open up um, a, a video really quick. Can you guys see my screen? Is this looking okay? Yep. Great. So what I'm going to show you here uh, is actually um, my path's ability to update a field in the SIS. Um, so what we're going to show is that for a given student, uh, we basically have set a rule up in my path that will say when a student has completed four of their five advisor cards, very four specific advisor cards, we're going to write to the SIS and update their orientation status to be complete for a given student. So what we're showing here um, is that we've queried the SIS. We know that this student does not have a complete status for their orientation. So we're going to head over into my path um, and, and quickly we're going to show you uh, that, uh, that this student is the one we were just looking at in the SIS by, by kind of highlighting the CCC ID here. As soon as the uh, screen loads. So here you'll see the CCC ID actually matches the one for the student that we were just looking at in Postman. So flipping back over to my path, uh, what you'll see is that we've created a very basic account in my path for a college. 
um, a very basic set of advisor cards and tasks. And we're just going to go through and we're going to set these cards to complete. Um, in this case, you know, that just means that we're going to click on each task and basically consume the content, you know, that it's, it's pointing us to. We'll come back to my path and demonstrate that the card has been marked to complete. So we're going to go through and do this a few more times. So you'll see that that one's done now. And then we'll check off this last one. Okay, and so for the purposes of this particular rule, this actually is all we need to do is to complete these four cards. So what will now happen is a rule will trigger in the MyPath rules engine that will update the SIS to have orientation status complete. And we will do that by writing to the SIS via the glue adapter or the super glue adapter rather, I'm sorry. So you'll see here now that this uh, has been marked to completed. So this is an example of now how a series of events that a student has taken part in in MyPath has fired a rule from MyPath and written to the student information system. Okay. So I will jump over to our other demonstration now. Jane, please go ahead. Uh, if you pause it just for a second, I'll just introduce the admission status and talk about a little bit of how it's different from orientation. Yep. Um, so admissions uh, is really a get only. So with orientation, the feedback we got from the colleges was that orientation is something that the colleges can foresee actually um, embedding an orientation video somehow in my path and then having the students, uh, you know, using it uh, to complete that step. And that's why we did the right uh, to the SIS with admissions and some of the other statuses because they're not such a simple um, use case there sometimes will actually be a number of statuses that combine to say that the student is actually uh, completed their admissions um, we're not going to be having a right to with this just to get um, the team has actually developed a, a post endpoint for admissions but it is disconnected from the SIS we just use it for testing so that we can actually manipulate the data for our tests so just wanted you to know that um, and all of these um, you know the get admissions the right orientation the read orientation are really very flexible it's how you want to implement it what statuses you want to use uh, so this is not anything that's uh, required it's just a feature set that's available for you okay go for it so here we have an admissions card um, and uh, you know so my path is waiting to find out has this student completed admissions and then it can fire off uh, messaging to that student. So here we're again uh, selecting a specific student. We're in Postman. Um, we have an application pending. As you can see that application status is pending right now and then we're going to do an update to that again through Postman just showing, showing you in the background what uh, is happening and what's possible. So we're updating that to application accepted and again, this is just for the purposes of showing you guys, we don't actually have a right to that we're shipping with uh, the MyPath integration. So applications accepted now for that student. That is passed to MyPath through the API gateway and Apollo. And when we refresh this student, that card will be complete. So again, with this card being complete, that can facilitate additional messaging, um, however the school would like to configure that. And yeah. so that's our basic demo. Yes, thank you, Jane. Um, yeah, so that's, that's generally, um, you know, a really good example of the inverse of what it was that I demonstrated, which is, um, you know, we manually updated a field in the SIS to show that it was complete. My path was notified of that change. And then my path was able to take action based on on that fact. So you know, and you can do any number of things you know within my path. So you can mark a card complete. You can change the students' cards that um, are visible to them. Uh, you can add new tasks. You can message the students. So hey, we saw you were admitted to college. Here's a set of information for you. Um, really, you know, the possibilities are endless. And of course, those those messages, if you do chose to, or choose to to send them, um, will go out via all of the students' uh, selected um, communications channels. So like if they're opted into text messages, for example, we would text message them that information. So let's talk a little bit about how it works on the MyPath side. So historically, um, MyPath and its sort of like ability to uh, dynamically generate uh, a pathway for a student um, is based around this set of, of uh, products, right? So, you know, we know a student comes in uh, through OpenCCC and creates an account. Um, most oftentimes, the way colleges are using MyPath is in a post-application uh, manner. So that means that a student goes, creates an account, they submit their application, 
and then they head into my path to do their onboarding. Some colleges actually um, have students go to my path before the application as well to complete some additional things. But generally speaking, it's constrained to these three systems. And this is where we get all of our information about the student um, that the college can then use to write rules that will then generate the pathway for them. So what that means is if we learn that a student is a veteran and the college wants to have a veteran services card appear for only those types of students, they write a rule that does that. If we learn that uh, a student maybe came from a specific feeder high school or maybe they uh, you know, need childcare services or whatever, you can write rules based on all of those things, things that we learn in the account creation or in the application process and, and use them to have my path dynamically generate a pathway that is specific to that student because they have those facts that are true about them um, and, and really provide them with the information that we, uh, you know, that we think is going to give them the best chance at success, at proceeding to enrollment, at getting all the things that, will, you know, that, that they need and that are unique to them. Um, and, and so really that's been our ecosystem up until now. What we are deploying now adds a couple of additional things into the mix. So first off, there's a thing called Apollo, um, and Jane can talk a little bit more about that, but essentially this is a cache database that sits between my path and uh, the Superglue adapter. Um, and what we do is we will then send, uh, when we want to write to the SIS, information to Apollo. The glue adapter will, or the super glue adapter will pick it up and then it will write it to the student information system. And the way that these are engaged, of course, the, the, the fact that, or the way that my path then writes into the SIS is all triggered out of a rule. So even after we ship this, you know, if you want to turn this functionality on, you just need to, you know, configure some extra rules that will say, hey, when a student, you know, meets certain criteria, write certain things to the SIS, right? And of course, the, the inverse of that works as well. So we can also set my path up to, uh, to pull the student information system. Um, we can talk a little bit about, uh, about how we're gonna work to minimize any impacts on, on resources uh, in that kind of a scenario. But in that world, what will happen is uh, my path will then be made aware of changes to specific fields in the student information system by constantly looking at Apollo, uh, which the glue adapter will move data into. And uh, my path can also then write rules based on, the, on, on that kind of data as well. So you can say that when, uh, for example, as we showed in the demonstration, when the admission status changes, a different set of rules will fire and you know, a student will get an experience that is unique to that. All right, thanks, Mike. So I, we decided it was really worthwhile to take a couple of slides and talk about Superglue for those of you who uh, have not, don't have this at your college or don't really know what it is or how it works. Um, and also just because uh, Mike has so many sparkly features uh, that, uh, <laughs> that I wanted a chance to show up a little bit about what we do in the background, because generally, uh, of course, it, that's not something that anyone notices unless it's just not working. So um, how does Superglue work? As Mike mentioned, my path talks to a which is a data graph platform and I'm going to get into more details on that. It's a very exciting new innovation in our integrations platform that's really opening up a, a lot of great uh, capabilities for us that we have struggled with in the past. Um, our Superglue API gateway, which was rolled into production in 2018, um, based on lessons learned about how scalable things need to be with our uh, our system of more than 2 million students, um, and then also on how to better secure the transactions that go uh, across our integrations platform. So uh, this, the API gateway uh, communicates with Apollo. It routes uh, workflows to the college system, the on-premise college systems. Um, on, the, on the, you know, what's in on-premise uh, when we install Superglue, and um, I don't think we mentioned, but the Superglue uh, college adapter is required to be installed to facilitate this integration. Uh, so you will need to get this installed. It's uh, has a, there's an adapter that's installed behind your firewall. Um, this is done by our enabling services team uh, with uh, uh, real uh, in managed by your IT staff and uh, in collaboration with them. But uh, enabling service does the heavy, heavy lifting because we want to make sure that uh, it's as easy and has as little impact to your college process as possible. Um, so what's on premise? There's a super glue college adapter, but that actually does not communicate with our API gateway. It just communicates with a service worker that has a, you know, basically a single purpose, which is to communicate with the service conductor in the API gateway. The reason I'm actually pointing that out is because the Superglue College Adapter is, has REST-based APIs that facilitate the communication with the student information system that does the gets and the posts and things like that. 
And you never want to have open endpoints available externally. So the service worker, since it actually is the only thing that actually does out manages the outbound traffic, and it has absolutely no open endpoints, um, it really secures uh, and makes sure that there's no external access possible whatsoever to your student data. So um, anyway, don't want to get too much in the weeds on that. If you guys have some uh, questions, uh, follow-up questions as you're considering uh, rolling the adapter into your systems, um, our CRM team can really, uh, really help with that. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, um, so we're going to talk a little bit about these components. I mentioned the Apollo Data Graph platform. It's it's a, a really a great innovative service that we have. Um, this you know my path is the first integration that we rolled this out with, but it's going to be what we use going forward. What happens is is we have we're we're all microservices. Our architecture is all microservices based. So. Um, we have microservices, we've got RESTful APIs and database, and, and we wanted a way that we can share and, and facilitate the data exchange in a better and better way. So with the Apollo platform, we can put all of our APIs, our databases, microservices into one single data graph, and then that can be queried with GraphQL and that way you don't have to get a, a complete record of data. You can just get the fields you're interested in. And it really makes uh, for a lot better uh, performance, uh, load balancing, scalability, and all of that. Um, it also facilitates eventing for some of the integrated systems we have where triggers aren't possible or they may be possible, but only with a heavy load on the colleges. And so we're always trying to figure out a way to um, make it easier what we do on the colleges. So with Apollo, we can pull the information that we want to get. It can store that off and then it does the deltas. So again, it, it, it really facilitates the ability to do eventing, which we haven't really had before. Um, before we've had to do kind of full pulls and do the compares ourselves, and that can be um, a, really, uh, a really onerous process. So um, that's Apollo. The API gateway, as I mentioned, it has a service router that provides it's it's based on netflix open source uh open source um components uh i think it's called zool and conductor and uh the reason we rolled the api gateway out in 2018 is we really learned a lot of lessons about scalability um in some of our earlier super glue integrations um again we have over two million students that's a lot of transactions that route around how could we do it better and more scalable? Um, Netflix at the time in 2018 actually, actually um, was 15% of the global internet traffic. So they'd actually already faced that problem and they'd really solved it with their API gateway. So we've taken that on and we really use it um, to dynamically route our services. The service conductor, it enables you to string together a number of microservices into a, a complete workflow. And that's easy to take apart and, uh, and you know, rework as you need it. So it makes for a lot of rapid development. Um, and then we have service workers, as I mentioned before, that they connect that conductor workflows to the backend microservices we need. So um, just a little bit of data on that. Again, I try not to get too much in the weeds, but we're always happy to talk about uh, what, what makes Superglue work. Okay, next one. All right, the adapter. Again, this is what you're going to need to install on premise. Um, the installation of this goes really fast. Again, it's done by our enabling services team. They have it down to a basically three to four week effort um, to get that done. It's all completely, uh, you know, in collaboration with your college and you tell us what to do and when and then our enabling services team uh, tries to get all that heavy lifting done. Um, the adapter, again, has RESTful APIs and standard data objects. It directly communicates with Banner, Colleague, and PeopleSoft. Um, but again, all, the tra all that outbound traffic and inbound traffic is managed by the service worker. And uh, with its direct connection to conductor, there's nothing open that can actually allow any external access. All right, and that's pretty much it for me. Great. Okay, so before we head off to uh, look at the questions, because I see chat has been pretty active, um, but we want to talk a little bit about where we are going next. Um, so what we we're hoping to, and Jane uh, fact check me here, what we're hoping to deliver here uh, this summer um, is integration with a, a few fields. So we'll be delivering um, orientation, uh, admissions, and you'll see listed here on the what's next slide, ed plan status, but we actually think that we're going to be able to fit that one in this summer as well. So uh, orientation, admissions, and ed plan should all be active uh, this summer. 
Yeah, Ed Prime was a bonus that we discovered this week because I talked about the rapid development. Once we actually had that template for communicating with the SIS, the team said, oh, we can knock out an additional field, no problem. So um, we're really excited to be able to actually have that extra field. Yeah, that's great. And it's, it's, it's great to, to meet our stretch goals because what it means is we can then proceed directly on to a new set of fields that we're going to work on next. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to work on uh, student registration status. Um, we're going to take a look at um, account holds for a student so that we can use my path to communicate with students about that. Um, and we're also going to take a look at integration with, um, with Canvas. So that would be actually adding another system into the mix um, that we would be able to integrate with via uh, Superglue. Um, and what we've, what we've seen is we have um, some colleges uh, like State Center who are using Canvas right now to provide an orientation platform for a student by delivering what they call an orientation course. Um, and if we do integrate with that or, or kind of the idea behind the research here is that we would be able to uh, direct a student to Canvas from my path to, to complete their orientation course, um, accept the student back into my path from Canvas when they're done, and then have my path notify the SIS that the student had completed their Canvas uh, based orientation uh, program and let them proceed on to whatever the next step is for that given college. Um, so that's kind of the, the idea here. Although um, an integration with Canvas could also mean a lot of other things as well, because obviously, you know, colleges use that for um, various other purposes. Um, and, and we would open my path up to those by integrating with it. So we're, we're excited to see kind of where, what that research yields. Um, and uh, on that note, we are always looking for feedback in terms of what kind of work we should be prioritizing, what kinds of SIS elements or other systems we want to add into the mix here. Um, and we are, we need that information from you guys. So if there are ideas that you have, if there are, um, if there are suggestions, if there are things that are really high priority for your college and you'd love for us to help you with it, please don't hesitate to contact us. And there are a few different ways that you can get in touch with us. So mine and Jane's email addresses are here. Feel free to write us and copy us both. Um, but also each and every one of your colleges has a college relationship manager assigned to it um, who will be able to field that same feedback or if you'd like to implement some of the features that we talked about today, whether it be um, getting the, glue adapter, the super glue adapter deployed at your college, or if you've already got it, um, starting to have my path, uh, you know, filled with the rules that will allow you to do some of these integrations we're talking about, um, highly suggest you reach out to your CRMs and talk to them about that. And in case the, the title isn't familiar to you, that'd be uh, Monica Matusek, Monica Zalika, and Warren Whitmore. So if that name sounds familiar, you'll know who to go talk to. Otherwise, this email address here, CRMs at uh, cccatechnology.org, um, will actually uh, send a message to all of them and, and they'll know who to, who to help you with. Um, so with all that being said, I think we can go on to questions and feedback. So Mike, we have a question in the chat from Maureen. What's the timeline for next steps? And Maureen, if you can clarify if you're looking at um, when this will be available or how, what next steps are for adoption, if you can clarify that, that would be great. Canvas integration timeline, Mike. Yeah, so uh, that is one of our, our research items. Um, we're hoping to look into that at the start of this coming fiscal year. I don't know, Jane, have you guys slotted that one into a particular place on your roadmap or do we just know that it's part of the next phase so far? Um, as, as far as Ed, which one, I'm sorry. Canvas. Oh, Canvas. That's something that we are just researching. It would have to be something that we looked at in the most likely um, 2021, early 2021, um, just because the, we're going to have to really take some time to do it right. We already have a Canvas SIS integration that Superglue offers, um, just a basic one for, uh, for, for the colleges if they don't already have their own Canvas SIS integration that cre automatically creates uh, Canvas courses uh, from the SIS uh, data. And so we've worked with Canvas a lot and Structure is really great to work with because they have a very, very robust API set. So we have a lot of experience there. Um, it's just going to be uh, what do you guys want to do with that and how we prioritize it. So we're going to need some time to research that, get that nailed down. But um, I would think it would be in that early 2021 time frame for that. Um, did we mention that the pilot for this first, the first three statuses um, is going to be available um, mid to end of June. So that is next month. Um, with production at the end of July. So, uh, you know, that those next steps are coming right up. Yeah, that's great. And, and Maureen, I would ask um, if you wouldn't mind, if you've got some ideas around what you would like to do with Canvas relative to my path and that kind of an integration, please email us and let us know uh, what it is you're thinking there. 
Um, we need to explore, obviously, the API capabilities that Canvas offers uh, and how we might use them within my path, but we need use cases from the colleges to kind of drive how we build that functionality. So please do email us and let us know what it is that you're thinking, uh, and we'll take a look. Yeah, it'd be good to get your feedback. It's an exciting um, integration possibility because, again, Canvas is a system-wide deployment. And so, you know, it's a, for student experience, it's already set up really well because it's not going to be just college by college. Um, it can be something where they, you know, they can actually unite their view across different colleges uh, based on their Canvas data. So. Um, let's see, I see Fred's question, will the ability to support my path be impacted by budget reductions to the tech center? Um, as with everyone right now, we are watching to see where the legislature heads, uh, given the budget from the governor that was presented on the 14th. We are preparing for the next fiscal year, very conservatively focused on quality and maintenance of our tools. We now have 53 colleges who are either using my path uh, actively right now, or are in the process of adopting it, including the nine LACCD colleges that went live together a couple of weeks ago onto my path. So my path is a priority in terms of budget allocation to the technology center. And we are focused on how best to continue improving it uh, in ways that are as cost effective as possible. So we don't have budget numbers yet from the chancellor's office in terms of um, what we will be uh, provided with to support the products, but we are uh, focused on those couple of pieces, quality and maintenance, and uh, hope to have a clear direction forward in the coming weeks. And again, this initial release with the three statuses is part of this fiscal year funding, so that is definitely going out the door. Correct, Jennifer? Yes. Yes. Um, and then the next thing was, will the MyPath step help us avoid spam account creation? Uh, this might help us identify people better than bots. That's an interesting um, point that you're raising. Um, we, I, don't, I personally hadn't thought about that in terms of directing um, students from MyPath into apply being a part of the spam uh, flow, workflow potentially. That, that's something that we'll go back and talk to the apply team about in terms of what the, the mechanisms are within the spam filter and how we might be able to leverage uh, the URL in terms of the, the redirect from my path into apply as potentially part of that indicator. So thank you for that information uh, or that question, Chad, because it, it triggers some, some future conversations between the teams and so we'll keep you posted. Yeah, I can think offhand of a couple different ways that you could potentially take a look at um, using the admission status uh, field change um, to notify students through my path of that status because you could probably assume that bots aren't going to respond to those kinds of messages, um, depending on how you how you do it. So um, certainly if you've got some ideas or things you would like to play with, um, talk to us or talk to the CRMs and we can help you kind of try some of those things out and pilot once this stuff gets out there. Um, and, and see how see how you like it, um, see whether you think it'll help, uh, and we can we can go from there. As I mentioned in the chat, we have um, what did I say? Fifty one colleges that are actively using super glue, and we actually have a couple variations of the glue product that are in use um, at other colleges as well. If you have questions about how you might leverage super glue in a specific way given your specific SIS, our CRMs are happy to make those connections with others uh, to have the conversation directly with another college. So um, they're, they're always helping with getting those questions answered and uh, making sure that you all as our end users are provided with as many resources as possible. And we know that the best way to get an answer is often from people in your same position at another college who've walked through it. So that's been our model with our products and uh, we want to be able to make those connections. So please reach out and let us know that you have those questions. And Jennifer, I was noticing um, one question and, uh, you know, Jeff was talking about Imperial Valley and how, you know, currently we deliver data directly to the SIS staging tables, but the bridge from the SIS staging table to the banner core tables is managed by the uh, IT staff. Um, this, this integration is different. Um, so I did, Jeff, I did want to bring that up because I know you guys use um, MyPath um, and Melody's, you know, 
been a really good resource for a lot of feedback on that. Um, but with this, it actually is going to do a direct communication to Banner to update the orientation status. That again, that's the only re or only write we're doing, and it goes directly and it reads from uh, you know those core tables in Banner. So this would actually facilitate a direct connection to you know Banner or Colleague or PeopleSoft based on what you uh, you know how you um, what SIS you have. Yeah, and we can work with your team there, of course, to um, try to minimize any impact it has on you by doing things like scheduling that, you know, scheduling reads um, and pulls, you know, for polling type integrations to happen like once, a, you know, once a night, you know, we think it probably should happen more than that uh, to provide the best possible experience to students, but you'll be able to give input on when you would like that activity to occur, um, how often, you know, what time it's scheduled, those kinds of things as we as we go through this. Yeah, that all of that is completely within the control of the colleges. And um, in terms of the polling, we're not polling much. So um, it's it's not like uh, right now the Canvas SIS integration we pull. It's enormous what we pull pull in terms of all you know all the student rosters, all the courses. That's a huge huge data lift. This is very minor. Any other questions? And we also wanted to put in a pitch that we are looking for uh, anyone who's interested in doing early adoptions and piloting this. Um, that would be great. Um, we know that with everything that has gone with schools moving to online, um, staffs or uh, staff has been stretched very thin. Um, so, it, you know, honestly, we have not wanted to try to strong arm people <laughs> into piloting this. So with anything involving uh, superglue, uh, there's always an inherent uh, pilot. Uh, so if you take this on, uh, you know, six months down the road, there will still be a pilot period for you um, as we're making sure that everything is implemented correctly uh, with superglue. Um, so, you know, there's an inherent pilot part of this, even if you don't want to pilot it immediately. Hey, Melody, I see your question about whether we're going to be able to make um, very specific pieces of PII available to uh, colleges to use uh, as they create rules. Um, I actually am going to dig into that and I will get back to you. Um, after the after the, the presentation is over, I'll email you directly. And um, I was just on a call, um, call sponsored by the Chancellor's Office regarding LGBTQ plus um, data collection in CCC Apply and utilization of that data at the local level. And I will say that there is conversation that is being revisited. Uh, we first put those questions into CCC Apply in 2000. Well, we started talking about them in 2011, 12. They went into the application um, in 12, 13. Uh, 13, 14 fiscal years, and now we it's time to revisit them. So we are doing that, and so you may see changes coming down around that data specifically, but also potentially related data. So watch for that as well. Any further questions from anyone? I know I always look forward to these webinars because the feedback that we get from all of you, even in such a short time frame in a chat window is fabulous. And we, we take it back and the teams start meeting and our CRMs start uh, engaging. And so we want to make sure that we continue to provide a forum to do that. Uh, watch for some upcoming webinars. We're talking about topics. If there's something that you'd like to see us dig into and present and, and have our product teams provide additional insight into, please reach out and let us know. Same methodologies uh, with regards to that contact. And uh, we're, we're happy to, to meet that request. So uh, let me see if there are some additional. Um, so reporting from my path. Mike, you want to touch on reporting a little bit? Yes, yes. So we are really excited. We the, the summer release that we're talking about here is going to deliver the infrastructure that powers those reports. So the work largely on the MyPath side of things is done. Um, all we're doing now is just piping the data from the, the data storage location into the actual reporting front end that you will use. So we will be delivering very soon the reports, uh, as well as training on how to access those reports and account creation. Um, we'll probably engage through enabling services to provide that um, so that you can log in and start running those reports for yourself. So the answer is like, we're so close. Uh, it's it's very soon, and this summer is is you know when we intend to to make it available to you. Yeah, and we're very excited about that functionality and being able to to dig into the numbers. Um, also, uh, Lara says, is there a front end version that allows non techies to make changes to card functionality and communications? 
Yes, very much so. There is an admin interface in my path um, that was built explicitly with non-technical personnel in mind. So not only can you make changes to the pathway, um, you can make changes to uh, the order cards appear for students, where the task point. You can actually use it to create essentially web pages within my path. So we give you a very simple Microsoft Word-like interface where you can stand up information there. Um, the only thing is you will want to work with enabling services to uh, configure any rules that trigger communication. So I thought that was part of your, your question there. Um, presumably, uh, you are going to want to do that in some sort of a dynamic way. Um, but all you have to do is tell them what you're looking for and they will implement it for you. Um, in terms of like managing the cards and the content, that's all very easily done by, uh, by any non-technical people. Uh, Rules-based functionality, uh, again, is very fast. You'll just want to you know, tell enabling services what you want and they can handle it for you. Um, and then Virginia, I see this question, um, assuming you say in the summer, uh, we're we are intending to deliver it about mid summer. We're hoping to get it out before the, the application season uh, in August. Okay. So yes, exciting things happening. Uh, we hope to continue to enhance the products based on all of your feedback and look for additional integration and Look for some integrated releases coming across our product suite because of the, the desire to better serve up all this data and uh, interact with the students. So more to come. Um, so how are colleges who have adopted Superglue using Superglue to enhance the MyPath experience? Are there a couple of examples that you can provide? Um, so right now, the you know everyone who's using MyPath is actually using Superglue. It's just you're not using the College Adapter, which is a communication piece to the SIS. Um, right now, uh, Superglue's Master Data Management component is actually facilitating the data that creates the student profile. So CCC Apply, when a student submits an application, that goes through Superglue's um, you know data integrations. The Master Data Management actually tracks the uh, student profile data and then sends it to um, the, the my, basically sends it to my path, which creates the student profile from that application data. So uh, already Superglue's there in the background. And what that does is it actually allows for um, really fine grained control. It's not being used right now, but I know the chancellor's office is, has really been exploring how to provide um, better control over what systems get PII, but also to, um, get integration set up with master data management so that they can, if a student asks to be forgotten in some ways, um, you know, based on the laws that have been passed recently in Europe and now here in the US, um, you know, we have to figure out what that means for our system and master data management can help facilitate that. So um, anyway, that's, that's a part, a piece of the Superglue framework that is actually in use right now with any one of you that are using MyPath. Um, this is just the next iteration of that to uh, facilitate communication down to the college level. I want to take one last chance to plug the idea that if you don't get a question in here in the webinar before it ends, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to Jane or myself or your CRMs, um, and we can answer questions for you that way as well. We're always available for that. Questions help us too, so yep. bring them on. Well, I think that's it. I don't see any additional questions in the chat. So thank you all for making time today. I know in the age of back-to-back -back Zoom meetings, it's hard to get on webinars, um, but we thank you for your time and we encourage you um, to reach out. Nathaniel is asking about benefiting DSPS uh, services uh, with regards to the integration. Yeah, so right now we do allow you to customize the MyPath pathway um, with DSPS information, either, you know, like generally to everybody, or if you want to target it at users who select an interest in that in the application, you can do that as well. Um, if you would like to see an integration with some DSPS specific fields in the SIS that you think would be uh, useful to your students in terms of an onboarding pathway that uh, is reactive to those things in the student information system, please, again, I'll go back to my, <laughs> my uh, request at the beginning of this presentation, let us know what those use cases are. We need this kind of information from the colleges to prioritize the work on our end. So right now we're working our way through a prioritized list of uh, field integrations um, that have been given to us by a set of colleges. We can always add to that list. So please you know, let us know if there's some ideas that you have there.
So right now we're able to deliver DSPS information based on student interest and other flags, but in terms of integration with the SIS and specific fields, that's where we need some input. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. That's right. You can you can service DSPS students now based on their application data. Um, it's the reverse of that where we pull things out of the SIS that we would want your help uh, identifying use cases for. Um, also, I will note I did see some questions in the chat that uh, folks had shown up late. Um, Sandoval, I believe we will make this presentation available to everybody uh, after the, the meeting is over via the, the MyPath website. Is that right, Sandoval? Yeah, so this meeting is being recorded, Mike. Um, we will distribute the link uh, as soon as it's available. It'll go back out to the distribution list um, that was originally sent to you. And will be posted at the website as well, yes. Okay. I think that's about it. Everyone have a great afternoon and uh, we hope you stay, well, in our part of the state, we hope you stay cool it's in the hundreds all of a sudden. So Mike has a different issue from where he's dialing in from, but uh, we hope that everyone stays cool and is has a good summer. Watch for our other webinars and our other releases coming out and thank you for your partnership. Hi everyone. Thanks guys.